God bless you. So today we're going to look at fear of God and what that means. So when it talks of fear of God, we're not talking about like a big dictator that you're like, Ooh, very scared of. Completely wrong interpretation. It's not the dread of God, the terror of God is the fear of God. And the understanding of this is that you may not sin. So knowing when you yourself were a child, for if you know with Jesus, he always says, Father in heaven, if you pray this way in the Lord's Prayer, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So we're always this personal relationship with the Father. Do you understand this? So uh, as someone that has been a child at one time or another, and a parent that observes and takes care of us. And we know when we are good, we have nothing to fear. But we know when we are naughty, and we have done something we should not have done, we know we are going to be in trouble. And it's that fear of being in trouble. Now you're going to say, what? Let's go through some verses so we can find this. So where shall we begin? I think I'm going to begin in Exodus. And we're going to go, if you'd like to come with me, to chapter 20, please. Now, it's going to be after the Ten Commandments. So we're going to start from verse 18. Because you know in the Ten Commandments, these are the laws that you don't break. Okay, the things that we follow. Now, from verse 18. Now, all the people witnessed the thunderings, the lightnings, flashes, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. Then they said to Moses, You speak with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, and that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. So the people stood afar off, but Moses drew near the thick darkness where God was. So, the fear of God is so that you don't commit purposeful sins. So that you're always mindful that you don't commit transgressions. To always further self-reflect on what I can do to be better. Ooh, was I mean to someone today? Was I cruel? Was I selfish? Have I praised the Lord? Or have I focused on myself? What things have I done that I could have done better? Always focus on what brings glory to God. And what brings joy and delight as a father to a child. And not what would bring lament. Nor worry. Nor concern. Nor sadness. So. Now that's just from Exodus 20. Next. I'm going to go into Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. So if you'd like to come with me to verse 28 of chapter 10 in Matthew. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So, without that natural understanding of fear from wrongdoing. So, if we're like, well, I don't fear God, I think I'm going to go do that sin I've been considering for a while now. Oh, sorry I did that sin, and then tomorrow you rinse and repeat. God is not a washing machine. So, we don't keep sinning, keep saying sorry, and then keep doing it. That's not what repentance means. Repentance means the change of mind. The understanding of the guilt and the shame of the transgression. For we understand the law. So we don't purposely sin. Now, from this, we get an understanding of, uh-oh, if I'm just going to keep being the lukewarm Christian, we know God says, I wish you were hot or cold, but as you are neither, I will spit you out of my mouth 
Now, that to me is a terrifying thing to imagine. I would not wish the Lord to spit me out. So we work ever humbly to bring joy to God. Now, you're like, whoa, God sounds a little bit scary. Well, let's continue. I'm going to take you to Proverbs 14, verse 27. So if you'd like to come to Proverbs 14, verse 27, please. Right. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death. So the life lived in sin, purposefully staying within it, not turning from it, not taking consideration of what it is. You see that if you have the fear of God, it will steer you away from sin. For what are the wages of sin? Death. As we saw here, the snares of death. So is there to trap you a snare as a trap? So sin is a trap to trap you from life, to take you from it. So then we have the understanding of repentance. And we're like, hmm, repentance? So, if we want to get some understanding... We'll go a little bit further. So, in the book of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 1, this is the letters of John. Okay? It goes, My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does, we have an advocate before the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. So if we do sin, we have Jesus to intercede for us. So when we sin, and we know we've sinned and we've done something wrong, we pray to God, we repent about it. We don't hide our sin because you will not prosper in sin. That will only pull you down like a weight. Down and down. And no good will come from it. But as that weight gets heavier and heavier, it convicts the heart. We have God above. We pray for Jesus' name. We name all the things we did that were wrong, for we know it was wrong. We repent for it and we turn from it. And we ask God to help us with it so that we don't do it. As for guidance, understanding, wisdom and discernment. Ask to be further refined to help guide you and strengthen you to make you that which is pleasing. Don't give in to sin. For when you are baptised, you are into the new life before your old man is crucified. All those sins are then. Don't continue in them now. So let's continue. Now we have more verses to go through. So we're going to look at 1 John. We're going to look at chapter 1 and verse 8 this time. Now we're going to, hang on, we're going to start from chapter, from verse 5, sorry, my mistake. We'll start from verse 5 of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 5. This then is the message which we heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleaneth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So accept that we are not perfect, that we do sin, but we strive ever further to get away from it. We don't give in to it we have things known as habitual sin or constant sin things that certain people do struggle with i know these sexual sins are hard for many 
But if you trust in God and put your faith in God and ask for the Holy Spirit to guide you, you will overcome. You may endure, persevere, but you will overcome. Put your faith in God, for all things through God are achievable. Don't just focus on yourself. No, I'm strong enough, I can do anything. No, no, no. Humility, remember, not pride. Trust in God as a child to a father, and he will lead you through your struggles, and you will get past them. Don't let anyone be contrary to the actual verses in the Bible. The Holy Spirit works through us, guides us, and strengthens us. Put your faith in God. Now, we're going to go through a list of verses about fear of God. So we can always make sure that this is something as a constant in the Bible and just a rare occurrence. For I'll tell you, there are many, many verses. I won't read all of them. We'd be here forever. Right? Proverbs 1.7 The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 8.13 The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. Pride and arrogance and the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. So does God like pride and arrogance and perverted speech? Does he like these things or dislike them? So why would we be walking in them? Let's further get our understanding. Job 28.28 28. And he said to man, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to turn away from evil is understanding. Ecclesiastes 12.13 The end of the matter all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. <clears throat> And now in Psalms 111 verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. So you're seeing a consistency here. Turning from lawlessness, iniquity, sin. Because you have that fear of God. You don't want to displease. You don't want to get in trouble. And with God, trouble is punishment. Punishment can lead to death, for there are sins that lead to the end. Do not risk your salvation by walking on a tightrope and going, I think I might wobble towards this little sin on this side, or I might wobble to this sin on this side, till eventually you topple off. Remember, it is a narrow road and a narrow gate, and it is a hard road. It does not say it is a wide road and an easy path with a big gate. It says it is hard, and it means that. So persevere, endure, overcome. Do not give up. And when you are struggling, remember the body of Christ will work together to help you. Call on your brothers and sisters when you are struggling. Do not go through it alone. Remember, when two or three are together and they agree upon a thing and they pray for it, then Jesus is surely among us. Put your faith in God. Next. Where are we? 1 John chapter 4 verse 18 There is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear for fear has to do with punishment and whoever fears has not been perfected in love So you see where he's telling us about the fear of punishment so the fear of God is the fear of the punishment of God If we take away the fear of punishment we focus on the pleasing of God and to always be willing to be work for God, to please God, to build that relationship with God. We are learning to perfect living in love for the glory of God. Don't focus on the sin, focus on the life of God that's pleasing. Don't let the world get in the way of your Heavenly Father. Now, we know with 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7, For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and 
self-control. So self-control. Let's focus and build our self-control. Focusing on God to refine us and never build it. Proverbs 14 verse 26. In the fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence and his children will have a refuge. So when you have that fear of God, you know you can rely on him to help guide you through. Build that relationship, that understanding of what it is to be that parent, adult, child relationship. God looking down on you, guiding you, you looking up, needing that help. Keep building the relationship. Now Deuteronomy 31.6 Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. So put your faith in God and do not fear those around you, for God is with you. Every step of the way, and it's not always easy. But we are fallen, and we do fear, and we do worry, and we do get scared. But if we put our faith in God, he is ever faithful with his enduring love. Now, Psalm 34, 4, I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. So they say he delivered him from some, most, the majority, this one and that one, all my fears. Do not fear the world, put your faith in God. Proverbs 22, 4, the reward of humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honour and life. Lay yourself with the Lord. Before him, reveal all and hide nothing. Be earnest with him in all your worries, all your struggles. Remember, his yoke is light. And all you who are weary, call on Jesus. Don't let the world overburden you. Now, Psalm 2.11 Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. For if we remember, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. As long as we always focus on that, we're not going to go, Well, I know I'm fine. i got nothing to worry about. I already believe in God. What have I got to be scared of? Don't become arrogant. Don't be complacent. Always be humble. Relying on God. As you can see, we have this consistency. So if I take us now into Isaiah 41, 13. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not. I am the one who helps you. So who helps you? Yeah, exactly. God helps you. Put your faith in him. Trust in him. Turn from the world and focus on your relationship with him and he will help you knock the door be answered ask and you shall receive be the faithful sheep part of God's flock for he is the good shepherd although I walk through the valley of death I will fear no other and why is that? because he is by my side trust in God so, there are many, 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 many more verses I could go through. But I think you're starting to get a good consistency of what we speak. I hope these have been helpful to you. And this can help you develop your understanding and your journey with God. God bless all of you and I hope this helps you. God bless.